we almost dropped them installing them. We're gonna be showing you guys our construction and install process for the biggest bar tops we've ever made. They're worth over $100,000 for the two bar tops. So we're gonna take you along for the whole process and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So they got their cabinets in and we're just coming to do preliminary measurements and then we gotta get back to the shop and actually pick out the burls that we're gonna use. Those might not work. No, those won't work. We have to... They're going to lift the second layer off yeah. and then we're going to route channels for the wire, etc. And then once we get a burl yeah. location, so we have to get that sooner than later, right? Yeah. An actual burl location and then stick to that. Yeah. So the sooner we can do the layout for this, the better. Almost like next week or something, we should try and yeah. pull all our Buckeye out. Yeah. Hopefully we still have enough. Yeah. We should. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So after our site measure, now we can begin laying out the burls for the actual layout in the bar top. So what Spencer's doing here right now is using a chalk line just to get our rough cut lines on there. And then he's just marking everything square, obviously. What we are doing here is we're marking things out about two inches oversized just for our initial flattening on the CNC machine. I love it. This is just like such a little tiny microphone. So once he's got them marked out, then we take these burls over to our sliding panel saw. This saw is very nice because you can see the blade goes up quite high and it cuts through these burls very easily. And once we've got them all cut, then we gotta go back on down to the ground, make sure everything's looking good, and then get them flat on our Avid CNC machine. After flattening and getting the pieces in the mold, we can actually start mixing up the resin and pigmenting it for the pour. So this piece is going to incorporate LED lighting, so we don't want to go too dark with this, but we do want to have kind of this slight black tint just to tie into all the other materials in the space. So I think we ended up doing about five drops of the black color effects dye, and we're just pouring all of this resin in a single shot here. We have no need to do a base layer because we actually want to see through this piece. And with our black forest deep resin, we can pour up to three inches thick like you're seeing here in one shot. One thing I will mention is if you're going to do a thick pour like this, it is critical to have lots of cooling. So we have an air conditioned room, we have large fans that we actually blow on the surface of the pours, and then our pour tables themselves have a sheet of aluminum beneath them that has water cooling that runs throughout the whole thing. After waiting seven days for the cure, we get it demolded and it is kind of stressful to move pieces like this, especially this one. 
uh, when they're long and skinny and have pieces of burl, uh, we've never had one break, but kind of our worst nightmare is that one of these is gonna snap on the burl point because end grain burl doesn't have as much structure as uh, like length grain pieces of wood if we were just doing a regular river. So you can see we have someone like every two feet down the end of this to make sure it doesn't break. And now we kind of have to precariously lift it down using our forklift. So we've got an extra long custom pallet that we got just for this purpose of moving it. And then using two forklifts at a time, we have to slowly lower these bars down. So once we successfully get it down without dropping it, then we're back onto the Avid CNC for more flattening here. And what we're trying to do is just go back down to the surface of the wood. We don't actually want to leave a layer of epoxy on there. The only reason that we over pour is so that we can fill in all of the cracks and voids in a single shot. But when it comes to our finish, we want to go right back down to that wood surface. So in order for us to trace out the LED lights on it, um, we kind of need, actually need to flip it upside down to trace the bottom side of the burl. So you want to get it over on the sawhorses for we now. Do. So we can at least get it sized because yeah. then we'll know for sure how much of the burl is going to be showing and whatever. Yeah. Then after flattening, we can go and use our Festool track saw for some sizing on this piece. Again, with the Festool track saw, especially if you want to get a clean cut, make sure you go in a few passes. Otherwise, you'll probably get burning, the blade will deflect, and it's just not going to be quite as clean as if you did it in a couple passes. Now, what we're doing here is actually templating out the exact shape of every piece of burl. The reason that we need to do this is so that we can take this template, go on site, lay it down where this bar top is going to go and trace it out onto the physical substrate. Then UTEC, the company who's doing our LED lights for us, will go and place their lights on that substrate in the exact location of where our burls will be. And if everything goes to plan and we don't mess anything up, we should have all of our lights hidden beneath the burls. So now we need to repeat that whole process over again for the smaller bar top that's going downstairs on the main floor. We'll go through it a little bit quicker this time, but we still want to show you some of the process. So Spencer rough cut the pieces on the panel saw after marking them out with the chalk line. And then again, we have to flatten them on the CNC machine before they go into the mold. Once they're flat, we put them in the mold in their actual layout that they're going to go for the pour. We add our pigment to our resin, we mix all that in, and then we go ahead and pour the nearly three inches thick in a single shot with our Black Forest Deep Resin. bar top. We're doing this exact same thing, drilling through our first layer of MDF just till we hit this plywood. That way we can mark where we have to route one continuous line so we can create a circuit for all the LED lights. And I'll probably follow that. So we got our holes drilled. It's marked us onto our second surface where we have to run all the wires to connect our circuit. We'll be routing a half inch slot that's two to three mils deep just to allow this wire to recess into so it can run flush to the countertop. So as John just mentioned, he's working with Alex from U Technology to lay out where the lights are going to go on here. And I just wanted to give a big shout out to U Technology. They're the company that's supplying the LEDs for this project, but they did a whole lot more than just supply the lights. There's Alex here on site helping our guys out and making sure that this install went flawless. Now we have to go to Jekko. They actually needed our help to come down and flip these things just because it's so nerve wracking to move them around. So we brought all the boys down, we flipped them over, and then they can start to prepare to put the finished coats on here. So I believe they do two coats of sealer 
and then two or three top coats. In total, it ends up being somewhere between five and six different spray coats that they put on these pieces. A piece like this, it's especially important that we, we build up as much of a coat as we can on here because these are gonna get used heavily. Like there's probably going to be hundreds of people every single night that are gonna use these bar tops. So we need to make sure that they last. So once Ian at Jekko has sanded the pieces and prepped them for spraying, he can go ahead and start with his sealer coat. Between this and the pour, this might be one of the most satisfying parts of the process because you get to see all of your hard work actually come to life in the way it's gonna look in the finished product. So one thing that I really like about this piece too is you can see that we got the natural kind of bluish gray staining in the Buckeye and it kind of ties in perfectly to the color of resin that the client chose. one you saw was the bigger bar top and now this is the smaller of the two bar tops here so still an absolutely massive piece but it is the smaller one and unfortunately it's not the one that has to get lifted upstairs we got to lift the bigger one upstairs Those of you who follow us on Instagram have probably seen this clip before. What Jack is doing here is flame polishing some acrylics risers that are going to be used to support the bar top. Uh, when we put this on our Instagram, I think it literally got almost 10 million views. Everybody absolutely loves seeing this process and it's actually the first time we've ever done something like this. Now, to clear up one misconception here, you cannot do this with epoxy. This only works with acrylic. I don't know exactly why, maybe someone can answer that in the comments, why this works for acrylic and it doesn't work for epoxy. But all we gotta do is sand them to like, I think it was 300 grit, hit them with the torch and they go perfectly clear. And now here we are for delivery day. I don't know if you guys can see it there in the top two. There's a little drone flying up above. Uh, that's Luca. He did a lot of the filming on the launch pad side for this project. And I believe they will be having their own video that's coming out for this. So check out Barry Eller and Launchpad Golf on YouTube if you guys wanna see their version of this video. But this was the big day for us, the day we had all been waiting for, getting these bar tops finally installed into the space. And this is where it's gonna happen. Alex said he'd be here by 10.30. Well, we're, we're moving forward, right? We'll get it up here, we'll get our notches cut. Yeah. It's up to him to keep up to us, so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's no option. As far as Barry's concerned, I just talked to Barry. It's it's happening right now. No, it definitely yeah, is. Yeah, whether he's ready or not. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we um, we got here, and the painting isn't quite done on the countertop. So if you guys check this out, um, you can see all the primers still on there. It it's not quite clean the way that we want this surface yet. Um, so the painter was actually saying maybe we install tomorrow, but we have to install today because there is a safety inspection happening. So we're gonna do some of the routing that we have to do to pre-fit these countertops and hopefully by the time we're done, this is ready to install. After we've kind of scoped the place out, it's time to start getting these bar tops in. So to make things easy on ourselves, we're gonna start with the downstairs bar top, the smaller one that we don't have to use manual hand crank forklifts to lift up a story. So that's what we're doing here. We're getting this bar top off onto some rolling carts and we'll get it in place to prepare for the lift. The 
This is the part we were kind of dreading. We have to take the bigger of the two bar tops all the way upstairs to the second bar. As you guys can imagine, these bar tops are not light. So this is gonna get a little stressful here for us. We did not realize what was about to happen. And I will just let you guys watch and see. Okay, we we could rest it here. He stopped. The other two. Mo, go lower. Mo, go lower. Mo, go lower. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Mo, you got to come out now. Okay. Stay there. Whatever you guys do, just be aware that that end of this wants to slide off. Oh. Yeah. Mo, oh. oh, you gotta go. Oh. Okay. Go up together. Someone count. More, Mo. More. Okay. Start pushing in. Okay. Push. Oh. Leave it. Leave it. Stop. 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 It's like it's skipping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do we need to get a, the other lift in between those two so it can't slide forward? Backside. I think we need to get the other okay. lift. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to move it, but we need something there for even the next two feet. Well, even we could just swing them that way. Yeah. Yeah, we can swing the end out. Yeah. Once you guys, once you guys have both of those, we can just move them both. Yeah. Like. All right. Go all the way down. All the way down? Yeah. 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 A little stressed though. All right, so as you guys saw, we were lifting that countertop up using the three hand crank jacks. And kind of what our plan was, was to lift it up evenly, drop the first one and then start rolling it in. But as we were doing that, it started sliding off the back jack. And like we, we all saw it go, like probably this much, it was sliding off. Yeah, that was, that was brutal. I was sweating. I, was I thought that was sweating. gonna fall for a second. I was yeah. actually sweating. <laughs> So we all kind of panicked. I think we, we saw the whole job flash before our eyes and imagine this piece falling down. Uh, luckily though, we were able to get the other jack around to the other side to kind of support it from both ways. We did have to hold it for a long time. I think a lot of the guys are sore and they were a little nervous, but luckily we managed to get it up. No damage at all to the piece. Everything is safe. And now we can move on to the rest of the install. So these are little spacers, clear, as you can see but they are about a mil thicker than our metal here. So that will be what the actual countertop sits on instead of sitting on top of this metal. While we're worried, 
So during transport, um, there's a few little scuffs that are on the bottom of this piece now. Luckily, the top side still looks perfect. Uh, but if you come around here, luckily we don't have to refinish the whole thing. We're just using uh, our polishing compounds and the polisher. And we're going to polish this whole bottom surface to an even sheen. That's going to get rid of any imperfections. Just, you know, normally you wouldn't see this on the bottom, but because we're doing the LED lights and we're actually going to be illuminating everything, it's very important that we have it all perfect. See a polishing compound and whatever brand of polisher we have. It's as good as I can do. So to get some of these marks out that are on the bottom of the bar top, Jack is using some of the Sia Abrasives polishing compounds. Uh, they have three grits. I believe we're just using two of the grits here, uh, but they do a really good job just to polish things up, get out any micro scratches and bring that shine up too. So what's happening here is the countertop along the back wall is actually out of square, of course. Um, and that's causing a little bit of a gap uh, for our fitment on the countertop. So we have to actually skew it at a bit of an angle but we can kind of cheat it when we line up the other countertop too. If everything goes right, we should still maintain an even gap all the way along. We going? Let's go. Okay, can we go right there? Let's keep the wave. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. Uh, you guys came out here. I don't know if that just comes through. Okay. Lift art. He can't get his fingers out. Okay. We're just shimming up the countertop right now just to uh, actually get it to sit straight because this whole thing is so heavy that it's sagging the entire support system down. So we've got two sticks underneath there right now just to hold everything up. We're going to add some shims underneath and then we should have it all sitting level. You what? You can't silicone it down today. Then I guess, yeah, we don't. We're going to make some custom metal brackets that are going underneath to support the thing. Yeah. Oh, they so are? As soon as they release it, it's just going to sag and break the silicone roll. Yeah, true. Yeah. So maybe we just have to leave it today, yeah. then we have to come back, fix the LED, get the tape, silicone it down. Wait, so are they saying they're going to build some support brackets? Yeah. Like something like this that's actually... No, no, like a... Like a 90 45, degree? 45 okay. from the edge of the plate to the counter. Get it. Like it sounds like what they're going to have to do is weld a bracket from the end of the plate. The only thing though is like this is just hollow tin, right? I don't know how well that's actually going to hold. I don't think it's going to hold much. Do we want to just kind of set it on a little further? A little further. Lift little up. Further. Lift up. Okay. Three, two, lift up. Okay. Okay. Uh. Like that? Yeah. Do we got to come more this way or? Yeah, we will. Yeah. Uh, we should be able to get it. The last we'll hole's right there. Okay. Yeah. I should, we should be able to take it. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay, so that is the end of day one. Uh, I'm at the upstairs bar top right now, and this one actually went a lot better than the downstairs bar. You guys probably saw during the install that we were scratching our heads and struggling quite a bit when it came to that lower one. I don't know exactly why that one is sagging more than this one, but the issue is, is that because of the weight, the whole thing's sagging down, where this one's not doing it quite as bad, so we are gonna be adding some extra brackets underneath, or the construction team here is. Uh, so we haven't secured anything down yet at this point. We're going to come back on Friday, do our final silicone to just hold this thing in place, uh, do any final touch-ups. If we need to put some more ceramic on, we'll do that. But that was a very successful day. The burls look absolutely incredible. The, we didn't know if this was going to work till we got these lifted on, and it completely gives the effect we were going for, where each individual burl has its own light source, and it just kind of glows. Um, so we are very excited for this to be finished up. We'll be back on Friday, but then we're also coming back on the 29th for the big grand opening. My shoes. Thanks, man. So we'll play a video on the screen right now that, I, that I've got here on my phone. Um, the install went great on the bar tops, but then we got a note from the owner that I guess the, the cleaners 
it looks like they used the wrong type of cleaner on here. And there's some sort of abrasive cleaner or maybe a dirty cloth. <laughs> but essentially what's happened is the lower bar top is completely scratched all over the whole surface and the grand opening is just in over 24 hours. It's at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. So we have to go there, try and polish it, get coats of ceramic on it, and hope that it's ready for the big day tomorrow. Drama. So this piece actually had some pretty deep scratches that required us to go all the way down to 2,000 grit sandpaper. We did a 2,000 grit sand, a 4,000 grit sand, and then we moved on to polishing compounds. Now. Remember I mentioned earlier how we kind of go extra thick on a top coat like this because we are doing it in a commercial application? Well, Jekko that is for that matter, I mean, they go thick with their top coat. This is why it helps to have a thick top coat. If we didn't have so many layers on there, we wouldn't be able to actually come and sand this layer down to get rid of those scratches. But because we have done that, we've got room to take those scratches out repolish things back up to a nice sheen, and then apply our black forest ceramics on the surface. So we did miss that part in this filming session, but we do apply our black forest ceramics after we polish just to give some more durability. <laughs> I know what you're thinking though. Good trick. That guy must eat his vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. Wow, that's a nice camera. You got one of those big old mics on it? Mm -hmm. Does that mean I don't have to talk so loud? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do it anyway though. <laughs> so now here we are at opening night. You can actually see the bar tops being used. This is the first time we've even got to witness this. It was kind of funny at the opening night, you know, everyone else is just taking in the, the awe of the whole space and mostly paying attention to the actual golf aspect of it. And then there's our whole crew. They probably thought we were alcoholics. We were just hanging around the bar the whole night, staring at it, ooing and aahing over it. But you know, it was it was worth it. If 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 I do say so myself, I think it was probably the coolest thing there. All right, so you guys just got to see the opening night at Launchpad. Our entire team had a blast. Some of us might have had a little bit too much fun, <laughs> but that that's okay. Um, the bar tops now have been in here for. I guess almost a month or so, and they're getting well used. Everything still looks very shiny. We've got the hydrophobic effect from the ceramic we put on. So we're very happy with how that turned out. And I just have to, again, say a huge thank you to Launchpad, uh, especially Barry here for choosing us to work on this project. And then also a huge thank you to our entire team who absolutely busted their butts to get this done. This ended up being kind of a rush for us right in the end, and we had to go all hands on deck on this project. We did not know if we were gonna get it done, uh, but the boys pulled it off. So we're very grateful for our team, so thank you to you guys, uh, and thank you to our audience as well for following along in this process. This is probably one of our more impressive projects we've ever done. I know I keep saying that, but we always keep pushing the limits. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure to complete this and we've got some more crazy stuff coming up soon. So if you guys enjoy this type of content, if you like seeing us make crazy, huge, expensive things out of wood and resin, please hit the subscribe button below. And if this was impressive enough to earn your like, then we'd also appreciate if you hit that. But that's all we got for this video this week, you guys. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.